Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, there's so many things that are unique about college basketball. One of those is emotion. And I'll tell you, in this sport, you can be on top of the mountain one day and 24 hours later or two nights later be in the valley. We had that Death happen. Valley. That's mm -hmm. what we felt. That's how we felt Monday Gee. night after we lost to the University of Kansas in a heartbreaker in Lawrence. But we played very well the previous Saturday against the University of Missouri, perhaps the best game we've played all season. Our team's playing well right now. And, of course, I think we fed off the emotion that we took out of Lincoln two nights before that that fueled us against Missouri. Well, when you go on the road and beat uh, Nebraska and then come back and uh, decisively beat the Tigers, well, you feel like you're really on a roll. And uh, for a long time, I uh, haven't felt the way I did going into Lawrence because it's never easy, and it certainly it's not easy on senior night, the last game for them this season. But I really felt like our ball club was going to go up there and beat the Jayhawks, and it was a terrific college basketball game. Uh, went overtime. We had a chance to win it in regulation, and Desmond missed a shot. Uh, got in the, the first overtime, and it looked like it was going to the second overtime after Alexander hit a great uh, trade to mm -hmm. tie the game. And then all of a sudden, uh, there was a very uh, questionable call there at the end, uh, and uh, Robertson was fouled by Peterson, and uh, they hit the free throw, and the game's over. We'll be able to see that in a little bit on the highlight package. But as we head into the final weekend of the regular season, a Cowboy win over Texas Tech on Saturday afternoon. Incidentally, that's a 12:45 start. And a Missouri loss at Texas, and the Cowboys are right there in fourth spot and get a bye in the Big 12 tournament. Well, two big ifs. Uh, I think, first of all, we have to take care of business and uh, beat the Red Raiders and then uh, hope that uh, the Longhorns can beat the Tigers. Uh, and I think the, that the University of Missouri is a very, very good basketball team, but the way Texas is playing, that'll be a tough uh, chore for them to uh, beat them uh, on the road. Well, indeed, the Cowboys turned in two solid efforts last weekend, and we're going to take a look at both after this opening timeout. Welcome back to the show. Eddie, of course, we've been looking for that complete game all year long, but a lot of the pieces started to fit together against Missouri in that game uh, at Gallagher, I believe. Well, we played uh, well at both ends of the floor. Uh, Missouri is a very, very good basketball team, and when you uh, beat them 84-68, to although the game wasn't uh, that one-sided, we jumped out early, and I think we had them down like uh, in double figures halfway through the first 20-minute uh, period. Then all of a sudden we quit playing and uh, they got uh, hot. Albert White is one of the best players in our league and he led their ball club I think with uh, 25 points and he got on a roll and uh, we're two points down at intermission but in the second half we came out and really played maybe the best 20 minutes of basketball we've played all season. You saw Gottlieb hit a three just a minute ago in the last couple of games. They backed off him early. He hit a couple of threes and all of a sudden they had to come out and honor him. Well, we had 11 out of 27 uh, from the three-point range. We had four pit players in double figures. Pete led us with 20. Uh, Mason had 13. Uh, Glenn and Alexander had a game like uh, I envisioned him having every time out. He had 16. Uh, Montanani came off the bench to give us 10. And uh, our other starter, uh, Doug, who you mentioned, uh, he, uh, he had 13 assists, no turnovers. Uh, Weber had eight points and uh, seven rebounds, so just a good overall uh, team performance at the offensive end. Seeing we were content in the first half to shoot a lot of threes. Of course, when they're going in, that's great. Second half, a little bit more looking toward the inside. That was the message, one of the messages at halftime? Well, we have a tendency because uh, we have been inconsistent with our inside game that uh, all of a sudden our perimeter players uh, start shooting the ball all the time from beyond the arc. And, that's okay if you're hitting the shots, but mm -hmm. if you're not, you better get it down low and where the percentage is much higher, plus you have a better chance of getting fouled. And of course, in this game, uh, we had a hot hand from the free throw line, 17 of 20, and those came in handy down the stretch. We hit 10 in a row down the stretch to put it away. Great effort here by uh, Brian Montnati. He finally got it in after about three attempts. Brian yeah. continues to play well off the bench and has been I don't know if it's a pleasant surprise because you guys thought he could do this all year long, but he certainly is timely coming off the bench. Well, he uh, certainly plays the part of the sixth man. He can uh, play defense, he can rebound, and uh, he can score. And that's what you need, uh, somebody coming off the wood that can really uh, give you a spark. Well, to me, this is probably one of the highlights of the two games, this being, uh, as we just saw, Glendon Alexander hitting uh, a bucket from the outside. Now, he's, if he starts to heat up, and we might as well get into this right now. 
he'll likely see a lot of playing time or maybe start and be the only one in that spot with Joe Atkins' uh, ankle is having a problem. Well, Joe uh, sparked us uh, at Kansas late in the game, and uh, he got into overtime. He rolled an ankle, and it's really uh, in bad shape. And uh, I'm not sure whether he will play uh, when we uh, host Texas Tech on, on Saturday. But if he doesn't, Glenn Alexander will start and uh, will really have to play a lot more quality minutes than, uh, than he's accustomed to playing. There's uh, Gottlieb, one of Gottlieb's 13 assists. That was a butte down there to... Uh, well, that's what he does best. Is when he breaks the defense down and gets inside the defense and forces help situations, then he, can, uh, he has great vision, uh, great passing instincts, and he gets the ball off to uh, open people. That's a nice play by Alex Weber. He was at his best, I thought, and we talked about this after the game. They're going to see a four-point play coming off for Pete, but Gottlieb probably was at his best during that 19-7 run in the second half when we broke it open. Well, like I said, he doesn't have to score a lot of points uh, to really be a tremendous asset, and, and there's what we're talking about. He drove in uh, to the middle of the defense, uh, kicked out to Pete, and Pete hit the shot and got fouled, which is a no-no. And uh, you don't ever want to foul those three-point shots and give them three free throws. And what's even worse, when they hit the shot, now they get another uh, free pitch. Well, we needed those, and here Alexander, he just had the stroke going that day. Well, we uh, one reason we won big against Missouri, we out rebounded 43 mm -hmm. to 27, and you mentioned we hit 17 out of 20 free throws, only turned the ball over 12 times, and when you do those things, uh, you've got a great chance of beating any ball club. And Missouri came in ranked, uh, and they're a good basketball team, no question. They've been uh, kind of neck and neck with us all year long, and you're going to see some of these free throws that we had to hit down the stretch to ice it. Well, Missouri is a good team, and uh, they're uh, in all likelihood going to be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I hope that our conference can get uh, five uh, teams in, the, in the, the big dance. I think they're, we're certainly deserving of it. Pete, I think, is going to go to the line here and wrap it all up as the Cowboys will win this one 84-68. And, again, it was a late second-half surge. They were tested, no question. They got back to within uh, – actually, when the Cowboys were down 51-50, that's when all the fireworks began. And finally, we were able to finish the game strong. Well, we've had a few games this year when we didn't finish <laughs> strong, and we'd like to go back and replay those games, but we certainly did uh, in this contest. Now. Here we are in Allen Fieldhouse, 16,000 plus, and uh, Pete hits a big shot there. Uh, Kansas uh, is a very, very good college basketball team. They're not as good as maybe they've been in the last few years because they haven't got any lottery picks. And I think people, Rafe and Paul, uh, both have gone on to the NBA, mm -hmm. and I think people realize what great college players they were, the way they've been playing in, uh, in the big leagues. You have had, over your long career, a couple of heartbreakers along the way that just goes with the business of coaching but this one had the rate or you see a little steel right there in the slam we need to do more of that that's what you call overplaying the passing lane and he ought to do that more often he has a tendency to play a little flat but desmond got out in that passing lane and intercepted and dunked it there's uh boshi their outstanding freshman guard this one had a rate as one of the toughest on that list isn't it well they've been two games up there in kansas that were really tough mm -hmm. uh I remember the one year when Burley missed a one and one We were up uh, by a, a point, or two, we were up two points. If he hits a free throw, we're up three, and if he hits the other one, and there's less than 10 seconds to go, right. he misses a one and one Collins goes up, has the ball, gets stripped right in the lane, and uh, they throw the ball down, and Woodbury hits about a 35-footer uh, and beat us by one point. That was a tough loss, but this loss the other night was tough because we really didn't get to finish the game in my in my opinion. And of course, you saw Atkins starting to heat it in the second half. Up by two at halftime, 31-29, and basically did what you have to do in this building. You have to make sure they don't run out on you, and we were able to do that. you got to make sure Kansas doesn't have runs on you, and especially when you're playing them at their place, because that crowd can really affect the game. Uh, if you're not careful when the crowd gets in the game sometimes, I almost think the referees are leading the fast break. <laughs> they, too, get caught up in the emotion. That's been said on a number of occasions by more than one coach. There's a guy, though, who took the Cowboys on his shoulders down the stretch to make sure that we had a chance at winning. Well, Pete had just been playing outstanding basketball. We're going to talk more about Peterson uh, later in the show, but he uh, has really uh, played like a... Here, you can't get a better shot we get right here. And I thought Desmond had hit that shot, mm -hmm. and then I thought uh, Alex had a chance to maybe get the put back. A lot of times, 
games are not won at the end of regulation or end of an overtime on the first shot. It's the second shot, the put back. And here's when uh, Joe went down right here. He got the first basket of the overtime period, but he really rolled that ankle. Here it is again. Uh, Cowboys have a chance right there to pick up another two and, and jump out early in overtime. That's what you want to do. Well, it is. There's a freakish play right yeah, here. Gee, Peterson actually need. tipped that ball in. They were up two, and and uh, that happens sometimes. That's why you always need. Look at Glendon draining it right there. Sometimes you need a friendly bounce or uh, some lucky break, and that certainly is. Here Watch it is. this shot. There you it is. You can see the time on the clock, 2.2 seconds now. We put uh, Frederick, they threw the ball to midcourt. Mm -hmm. Now watch this play right here. Most of the time, I would say 99 out of 100 times in that situation, regardless of who's playing, that's probably a no call. Mm -hmm. I, and uh, the official made the call is one of the best officials we have in, in, the, in the league. And it just so happened that uh, he saw that, that there was a foul that occurred there. And, and uh, so the game ends very abruptly. One of the things you told the youngsters in the locker room after the game, and it was a very tough locker room to be in because it stung those players, uh, was the fact that if we continue to play this way, the rest of the way, there'll be a lot more games on tap, there'll be a lot more W's to put in the column. Well, th that's a, the thing I tried to uh, express to them, that they really played hard. You couldn't play any harder than we did. We hurt ourselves by not hitting free throws, mm -hmm. 9 out of 17, and when you're playing a quality team, uh, that's enough in itself to beat you. But I was proud of the effort, and I told them that if they would do that the remainder of the season, then uh, there's no one left in the Big 12, uh, whether it be Texas Tech Saturday or whoever we play in the conference, that we can't beat. And I just hope that we get that opportunity to get in the, the uh, big dance because I think this team can win a lot of ball games. I think they're, uh, they're capable of going into the NCAA tournament and men maybe winning a couple and getting to the Sweet 16, but we got to get there first. If you have a hard hat, you might want to put it on during this short timeout. You might need it. Our off the court feature is coming up next. If you haven't been to Gallagher Ivor Arena in say about a month, well prepare yourself. Times are definitely a changing. Construction on the new OSU Athletic Center is moving along at a brisk pace. And while things inside for the time being still look the same, the landscape outside has already undergone a facelift. The Cowboys wrap up their 60th home basketball regular season Saturday afternoon against Texas Tech. They'll be looking to post their 555th overall home victory, 255th conference win in gallagher Ivor Arena. It has been and will continue to be one of the most exciting and intimidating college basketball environments in the country. It's yet another example of that old saying about the more things change, the more they really stay the same. We 
want to move forward in all aspects of our program at OSU. It's going to test her patience here the next year and a half, <laughs> but when that project is completed, we're going to have a very unique facility, and as you can see, it really has uh, changed the outside of Gallagher, but uh, you can't see anything, any difference inside, and I think that when it's completed, we'll still have that warm feeling that we have now and, and really uh, have that home court advantage that we uh, love so much, but uh, it's uh, been a little bit of an adjustment, I think just getting into Gallagher because there's only one door you can get in during the day and when the games come around I think they open the east door mm -hmm. but that's another thing I would urge our fans Saturday afternoon to get here early. Fortunately it has not affected the enthusiasm they were loud as they could be against Missouri and that's the way they need to be against Texas Tech. The notebook our Ask the Coach feature a look at senior day all these things are still on the table and we're going to get right to them when the Eddie Sutton Show continues in a moment. Welcome back to the show. Let's get right to the notebook. We have a couple of current event items to talk about. Our first item is here we go again and the Big 12 tournament. Should it be moved? Should it stay in Kansas City? Argument rages on. That's a hot topic and Kansas City has done a marvelous job with the tournament through the years and I think there are a great many people that feel like uh, why do we want to rock the boat by moving it somewhere else? But I think there'll be some pressure uh, the next few years maybe to move it south and uh, hopefully when Oklahoma City gets uh, the new facility constructed if they do move it maybe we got a shot at it. Our next item has to do with RPI. You'll hear a lot about RPI as we get closer to Selection Sunday. Should not the RPI reflect how good a team is when you beat them and not what their final record is? No, I, I agree with that uh, completely, but they don't do that, and I think that sometimes hurts you. You can beat a ball club early in the year when they're great, and all of a sudden they lose a couple of players, and they lose a bunch of ball games, and, and it doesn't show up in the RPI. So that's something they need to make some kind of an adjustment. And our final item has to do with officiating, and maybe somebody to take a look and, and kind of coordinate the officials in the Big 12. I think one of the things that Roy and Norma and, and I talked about uh, this last week was the fact that uh, – Maybe we need to have someone who just works strictly for the Big 12. Right now, our officials are assigned by three different conferences. Mm -hmm. One man does it, and he does a good job. But we feel like that maybe that one person could go out and get 25 or 30 if really quality officials, maybe pay them more than other conferences, and uh, where their allegiance is to the Big 12. Right now, when you have officials that work several leagues, uh, you don't find that to be true. This week's internet question from oakstate.com, presented by Southwestern Bell. Very timely. Pete's last game in Gallagher Ive Arena regular season, and Corey wants to know what are we going to do next year? <laughs> We're going to miss Pete, that's for sure. Third all time score, you know, and he's just been a great basketball player for us, and uh, even more importantly, He's a quality person. He's a great ambassador for the college game and, and a great representative of OSU. You know, he's going to graduate on time this spring, four years, and very few student athletes can do that. If you have a question for Eddie Sutton that you want answered on the show, log on to Oklahoma State's official athletic website at oakstate.com and participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Sutton contest. Quickly, Texas Tech in town, 12:45 tip off Saturday afternoon, and many fans, this will be their final look and a send off. For Adrian Peterson. I hope we have a marvelous crowd and I hope they send Pete out of here with a win and uh, give us some momentum getting ready to go into Kansas City next week to play in the Big 12 tourney. Well that's all the time we have for this week's show. We appreciate you being with us. For Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye everybody.